We watched Andor episode 8. So you know what time it is. Hit that intro. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, everybody, if it's your first time joining us, welcome. We're two dads who love all things fandom from Star Wars to Star Trek, Marvel to DC, and Middle Earth on down to Westeros. We love it all, and we want to bring all of our insights and love of all things nerdy to you, our viewers. So if that's your glass of spotchka, then we're here for you, and you should definitely subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on all of our amazing reviews and insights that we bring to all of our favorite fandoms. So thanks for tuning in, guys. My name is Chris Matthews, and I'm joined, as always, by my buddy and my best friend, Mr. Matt Parham. How you doing today, brother? Not too bad. It's had. Uh, it's been a long time since we have reviewed an episode of Andor. I feel like it's been a week, so I'm anxious to get it started Ooh. again. <laughs> long go time that yeah. we've we've reviewed old Andor. So <laughs> we're reviewing episode eight, titled Narkina Five, directed hmm. by Toby Haynes and written by Boo. Is it Boo or Boo? <laughs> I'm going to go with Willimon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with all these crazy names here. So, Boo Willimon, thank you for <laughs> writing this episode. So, let's dive into the Rotten Tomatoes. As always, guys, I like to look into the Rotten Tomatoes scores to see what critics are thinking of this this show and other, other vehicles that we're watching here. So, looking at Rotten Tomatoes, this episode, episode 8, got 100%. And so, we have about... Uh, yeah. 12 critics that have rated this episode, and okay. out of those 12 critics, all of them rated it fresh, so that's why it's 100%, if you didn't know. Mm -hmm. uh, average rating for these critics is 7.9 out of 10, so it's 12 critics, so take it or leave it for what it is, but let's find out what these two dads think of this episode of Andor, so hit it, brother. Yeah, well... A lot to unpack about this episode. Electrifying. Uh, yes. <laughs> One of us Woo! had to say it. <laughs> I'm yeah. glad you got it out there. <laughs> it was a shocking episode to be sure. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Toe curling. Yeah. By the end of it, my mind was fried. But, Barbecuing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but it was... it was interesting to see the expansion of the empirical world here. We got to see a prison, right? And uh, of not course... just a regular prison, too. I, uh, man, I got to say, I was very, very impressed with how clever they were with this prison mm -hmm. and how they portrayed it and, and the, the safety measures that they had and just how the empire works. And this is amazing because you get all this sense from this prison itself. Yeah. And this is what the empire is doing. They're conscripting basically slaves into mm -hmm. service to help provide for the empire so this is one of the reasons why they're bringing up bogus charges for all these people is so that they can pretend like oh we're getting all these criminals off the street and they're going to be working for you guys but they're really mm -hmm. not criminals they're really just people that we we took off the streets with bogus charges and we're going to we're going to shock them if they don't produce stuff to quota basically yeah. well and I, and I hate to i hate to continue the comparison but the empire has always been based in some part on the nazi regime and so this Absolutely. shows us kind of 100%. the galaxy far, far away's version mm -hmm. of a concentration camp, which, you know, those in reality were horrific experiences yeah. that people like you and I just cannot imagine. But here we have the writers and director and the creative team um, mm -hmm. trying to give us their imaginative version of what that's like in yeah. uh, the Star Wars continuity. So mm -hmm. I thought it was a real interesting take. I like that they paid a lot of heavy homage to george lucas's thx 1138 you caught that as well good yeah, yeah. i caught that right away with well, thx 1138 so and it, from the the soundtrack to mm -hmm. the visuals it it rings very true to not just that movie but lots of dysotopian uh mm -hmm. futuristic films of the 70s and 80s you know i'm thinking right. of like Soylent Green or um, what is it? Uh, uh, Logan's Run. You Logan's know, any, Run, yes. Yeah. Oof. Any of that stuff is is pretty heavily um, alluded to here. And mm -hmm. I, I was really happy to see that part of the galaxy just as an introduction to something new. Andor just mm -hmm. keeps giving us new things. 
to see right. in the galaxy and really opening up the whole world. So, um, yeah. you know, I, I'm enjoying that. And to cap it all off, they have Andy Circus leading the way. Man. Right? Such yeah. a good performance. Yeah, like, he, did. Uh, I, he, he came miss, up and I'm like, but... whoa, it's Andy Circus. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's him, Snoke himself. Do you think this is the the origination of, of uh, Snoke? <laughs> yeah, and maybe they he's just laid down on him. the floor yeah. too many times, and eventually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe this is the guy they just took all the cells from to make Snoke as the clone. Yeah, for, uh, if we want to get into all that stuff <laughs> for the Emperor as well. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, we could. Uh, that's another <laughs> another broadcast. So. So we're talking um, about brilliant writing here. We're gonna just leave the not so good <laughs> writing over to the side tonight, and yeah, and and not discuss some of the sequels. <clears throat> Sorry, you might like them, but yeah. uh, we're talking about Andor today. So, <laughs> but I also I also like they like they gave us typical prison movie tropes in here, and that you have uh, each of the inmates with their own yeah. personalities, um, mm -hmm. their own backstories. Of course, yeah. one of them has to you know either get beat up by the guards or killed by another prisoner, or in this case, commit suicide on the oh, uh, electrified man. flooring. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it just makes it that mm -hmm. much more horrific of an experience that you watch it and you're just hoping that there is some way for Andor to get out, which we know, of course, that he must. Because... He's got to. And it's a, really a good situation like that he's in prison at this point in time because... Yeah everybody's looking for him wanting to kill him or question mm. him and, and get him uh and it's kind of funny to see you know how over bloated the empire is the isb is looking for this guy when they actually have him in custody right now so it's like one hand doesn't know what the other hand is doing no it's another thing about the empire and it's why it's so easy to to get in there and and so, fight against these guys i before we get past that a little bit i wanted mm -hmm. to ask you as a normie yeah. You being uh, definitely a, a sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> Love that term. Sweaty. Yeah, and for the normies out there that don't know, I you know I'm a normie in that I've just basically seen the Star Wars movies and yeah. a few of the cartoons. Uh, Chris has read books, read comics, seen all the cartoons, seen yep. all the movies, uh, heavily mm -hmm. I invested in uh, in the canon and the fan fiction alike. Um, True. So. I was wondering, do you know, Chris, what were they making in that prison? That is, a, yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> it it looked like a turbine of some yeah, sort. Yeah, yeah, it kind of looked like I machinery. Know. I thought, yeah. are these pieces of the Death Star, or is this like pieces of the little AT, or what do they call the the tiny, um, the tiny ones? The oh, the ATSTs. ATSTs, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, is that some part of that? I thought maybe they were making the joints of the legs for a while, but then it ended up being some kind of scar pattern thing. So, I, Yeah, I think it's just some ubiquitous part that they're assembling. Yeah, I don't think it, I think I think you're right. I don't know if there was much thought put into Weren't exactly meant to what identify it. Was. it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but <laughs> so I no, did I don't love <laughs> that they balanced out the prison story with mm -hmm. a whole lot of other stuff going on. You yeah. know, we got great scenes with Forrest Whitaker coming back. As back Saul again as Saw Gerrera, all right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and even in just the little mm -hmm. screen time that he had, um, he, him and Stellan Skarsgård just had this great Feeling back each other and out. forth. Man. Yeah, they do. Yeah. That, that felt so authentic to the situation, mm -hmm. like neither one of them really wanting to tell the truth to the other, but yeah. they've got to, they've got to sort of collaborate somehow. And yeah. how do you do that when you can't even... You can't yeah. even talk to somebody without it meaning something other than what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, and Luthen, all Luthen is trying to do here is try to put all these splinter groups together. And, mm -hmm. you know, Forrest Whitaker, you know, his character of Saul Guerrero, like, he, he's still identifying these groups that, oh, separatists, these guys are these guys, these guys are these guys. And it's like, those, I, I would never work with a person like that or, or this and that. And it's like, no, yeah. we have to come together and do this as a group. It's like, and he like questions like, I never knew what you were, Luthan. What, what are you? And he's like, I'm a coward, you know? And uh, I, man, that, that conversation that they, those two actors had was stellar. Performances were amazing, but it does, it does show you how, 
how different these these two groups really are and how Saul Guerrero's group really is a splinter extremist group within this larger re rebellion that they're trying to form and how he's not going to come under the wing of the other factions as well so I thought it was really interesting to me it paralleled like the historical accuracy or realism of the American Revolution in some ways because mm. oh, the yeah. same For kind sure. of thing was yeah. happening at, at the beginning of that was yeah mm -hmm. yeah of the American Revolution there was just yeah. all these different factions some people wanted every state to be their own country yeah some people saw value in mm -hmm. a union and so it was very divided you couldn't figure it out to begin with but then it yeah. finally started coming together with some of the help of the founding fathers yeah and the continental people, congress so. like the different states like new york was really a yeah. troublesome one they didn't want to leave and, and be a part right. of this massachusetts was like come on we have to group together we have to band it's together the only we have way to do this. get the french yeah. involved and yeah absolutely so. yeah and so a lot of parallels there and you know george lucas definitely drew on that as well and you like you said earlier with the nazis with the empire as well a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of parallels there hitler was supposed to be what the emperor was based off of as well right. so yeah uh we we get all this historical context that we see in our real world Mm -hmm. imprinted onto this sci-fi realm and it it provides a very intriguing story that's for sure oh yeah well yeah. and we got so many intriguing mm -hmm. stories we got more yeah. of cyril karn oh um, yeah and, oh and I... finally finally he's coming back into play not just pushing buttons over there <laughs> um so it yeah. kind of feels like they're going to bring him into the isb what do you think and i think we nailed it on the head he's going to be working for the empire yeah, I, I think that's what's eventually mm -hmm. going to happen, and uh, we're going to continue to see that Le Miserat type storyline play out, which I, mm -hmm. I think is just another stroke of genius. It's uh, yeah. it's you think interesting... you grow a small mustache and everything, and like <laughs> yeah, have sort of a Captain Crunch hat, French. and yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, who knows? Yeah, <laughs> we've seen the cereal already, but um... <laughs> that's what we have. <laughs> No, but we also got uh, more of of uh, Mon Mothma and mm -hmm. um, and the political um, intrigue that's going on. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm wondering if there's going to be more to that. Does her husband suspect? Or are we going to, yeah. you know, have um, possibly Stellan Skarsgård and uh, Mon Mothma have to meet, but then be discovered by the husband? I I don't know. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I really am interested, to, like, because this is going to have to come to a head pretty soon, because this is only, like, five years mm -hmm. uh, before Rogue One, so they're all, like, committed by that point in time, so I, yeah. I don't, like, and since yes. after Aldani, it seems, and they, they mentioned this too, it's like, things have changed, like, uh, this is a whole new ball game. And Do you think that in Rogue One or in mm -hmm. A New Hope that Mon Mothma has been outed? Like yeah, she, for sure. She's recognized she is as out. a rebel. Yeah. yeah, she's no longer part of the Senate anymore Okay. when it comes to that. So, yeah, there's there's no going back for her at that point. I totally believe that. So, yeah, I wonder if we'll see that transition mm -hmm. in this show then. Yeah, most certainly. I wonder if Jimmy Smith is going to show up too in this show as well yeah. at some point because he is one of the founders of the Rebellion. So he's out there at some point. And <laughs> like we said in Tales of the Jedi, Ahsoka as well. Yeah. You know, so we might get Ahsoka, we might get Jimmy Smith, Space Jimmy Smith in this one. So And folks, if you haven't seen that episode, we review the entire first season, go check mm -hmm. it out. <laughs> yeah. And uh one of the links below. That's right. Yeah. I'm going to I think I'm going to um have that one uh premiere before this one. So yeah, it should be available for you guys, so just look for it on yeah. our channel. I'll link it in the ba back end of this episode. So, we're all good there. So yeah, it'll be really interesting to see where where things are going with this. I'm, and you know, I I put some feelers out there. I've I've seen like the the Star Wars fan base, and I gotta say, like, you know, a lot of the regular the the sweaties and everybody else, um, a lot of people are are still complaining about this show. They're saying it's boring, it's too slow, and I don't know. It's just like, you know, I like this show, but I don't mm -hmm. know if it's necessarily the the average star wars fan cup of tea uh when it comes to the material that we're getting yeah no i i don't think that it it necessarily is but yeah. i think that um i i think that it is to me it feels like a novelization of a star yeah. wars story and so yeah, yeah 
It's going to be on the slower side. Mm -hmm. um, as you've it's a good brought way up, to put it. it might be better viewed in sort of a binged out. Um, I really do think if they they came out with this with the with the three episodes, yeah, <laughs> right, right, uh, yeah, three movies or something, mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, and so, the next three episodes are directed and written by the same people. So I think this, this is the, now the, uh, the 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 prison break arc that we're yeah. going into. <laughs> so. Yeah, but I mean, I I just I enjoy stories that uh, mm -hmm. that are a little bit longer anyway. Um, I do too. Yeah. You know, I, I shouldn't say that because, like I was just talking about, we reviewed Tales of the Jedi, and each of those episodes like sixteen <laughs> to eighteen minutes. So. I think as long as it feels like you're telling a story with the proper amount of time yeah. for what's in that story, then you're good. You know, yeah. it, it needs to be as long as it takes to tell that story. So, yeah, um, to your me, story this... should dictate your pacing. And I think the pacing yeah. of the show is warranted with the story that we're being mm -hmm. told. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I don't think that it's bloated. I think mm -hmm. each episode is giving us. Yeah. plot driving story mm -hmm. you know there is stuff happening every single episode interesting it's stuff true. action based stuff so I, I don't think that the the regular Star Wars fan has a whole lot that would be missing here mm -hmm. other than there's no mention of Jedi's and the Force and the yeah. typical Skywalker saga type stuff which if you're that type of Star Wars fan then sure I can see that stuff is missing here you probably didn't like Rogue One for those same reasons, so you're probably not. Well, you had like Vader him. in Rogue One, so I mean, he that's had the, true. the most that's true, badass right? hallway scene of all time. Well, and yeah, in um, that one. So it, it did serve the fans <laughs> when yeah. it came to to that, at least in Rogue One. Right. So I don't know. Um, for me, it's it's just a another corner of the universe mm -hmm. to explore. Absolutely, and um, it doesn't necessarily have to include. Um, all of the mystical elements in order no. to make it Star Wars. So. Yeah, and like, so if it's not your flavor and if this is not your Star Wars, it's totally fine. You know, we just got Tales of the Jedi, which is outstanding. Like, we both yeah. absolutely loved it here at Fatherly Phantom. We're going to be getting Mandalorian, Ahsoka. We're going to get so many flavors here. So if this isn't for you, that's fine. But this is some excellent writing and television, mm -hmm. and the visuals directing. are amazing, the directing. Uh, the score is different than than anything else that I've heard in Star Wars, and I'm liking it. I, I, I'm just going to be honest; it's it, not my favorite. But doesn't it feel like I was saying at the beginning of this? Doesn't it? It sound kind of like a '70s, '70s, you know, yeah, dystopian future type thing. <sighs> Absolutely, they're very much going for that with with this show. You know, that very synthetic bing, mm -hmm. bing, bing style. Yeah. Even Cyril Karn's desk and like the layout oh, yeah. of that office and stuff, you know, very right. 1984 and mm -hmm. just you know, it's, yeah, a, very it's much an interesting take, which is what you would expect mm -hmm. from a, a whole galaxy ruled by this uh, this empire. You know, absolutely that uniformity, that mm -hmm. the, the the dull white white and gray and all this other yeah. stuff. You know, right. so. Yeah, we get a lot of that in this. And um, for me, it's like, you know, both of us enjoy lots of different types of drama, television, movies, and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And so we're finding the really good stuff to pick out of this this show. But again, like, I, if I'm going to if I'm gonna rate this as a, as a Star Wars show, I would rate it differently than I would as a, as a show on its own. Um, because, you know, it doesn't, doesn't necessarily feel like Star Wars. But for me... That's totally fine. We don't mm -hmm. need lightsabers. We don't need the Force. We don't need all that other stuff in every single one of these shows. It's really cool they get to see this galaxy far, far away without all that stuff because the regular people on the ground don't really get to experience that all that much. These, these Jedi mm -hmm. were only a thousand in billions of people. It's like they're not everywhere, and they yeah. shouldn't be everywhere in the galaxy. So it's really cool that we get to explore that in this show. So, do we want to head on over to our ratings, brother, for this episode? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I would like to give this episode an 8 out of 10 rating. Um, I think that by telling a story, like you were saying, mm -hmm. that deals with people on the ground, that it feels like the stakes are higher. You know, because, yeah. again, nobody can whip their hand around or a mm -hmm. lightsaber around and fix everything. Yeah. So. I don't know how Andor is going to get out of that prison. I'd be very excited to learn that in the coming yeah. episodes. 
Um, so, you know, we'll see how it all plays out. But eight out of 10 for me, what did you think? Yeah, I agree. Like, the stakes are a lot higher with this show. And, like, Stellan Skarsgård's character of Luthen, we don't see him in anything else. So I have no idea what happens to this character. And he's risking a lot. Like, he's getting himself in there, out there in the limelight and everything else. And, like, it all hinges on somebody finding Andor. And where where is this guy? What is he doing? And, like, And so we're all just, like, holding our breath right now trying to figure out what's going to happen with this character and where where we're going with that i mean we ultimately know that the rebel alliance forms up and everything and and we get a new hope and <laughs> rogue one and all that other stuff but it's still a very inventive story and it still keeps me guessing on where it's going to go and how they're going to resolve these issues and i find that that's very enjoyable and so i did very much enjoy this episode like i, I could see people having a problem with it like like we were talking about um, but for me, I enjoyed every aspect of the, of this episode be, because they gave us a different prison type of show. Like, I've seen tons of prison stories, and this was unlike any of them. I was like, that is extremely clever what they're doing there. They don't need to have weapons or anything like that. And when, when I first saw those boots, I was like, oh, those are really weird. What's going on there? And just like... The uh, the dehumanizing factor of just having to to walk around barefoot and everything, knowing that you could get shocked at any moment. I mean, your your life's pretty much over at that point, and mm-hmm. like you have to bust your ass. And if you don't bust your ass all day, then you're gonna get shocked anyways, and all this yeah. stuff. And and you're gonna have some some food that has no taste as well. Did you see that? <laughs> that was crazy. It's like we got taste today. That's our <laughs> that's our bonus. That's the reward. Gonna, yeah. So I loved all those little details too. They're really cool. So um, all in all, I'm probably gonna, yeah I'm I'm right with you, man. It's a eight out of ten for mm-hmm. me as well. Still very much enjoying the show. Can't wait to see next week's episode. Uh, we're already halfway through this season too. So we yeah. only got what? How many episodes left on this? Uh, so it goes up to twelve. So mm-hmm. we got four more episodes left of Andor. Can you believe it? We're almost there. Yeah. Almost Can't to the end. It. Yeah. So. So, a lot of fun. Anything else before we uh, hyperdrive on out of here, out of this electrified floor? <laughs> hey, yikes! Ah! No, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I don't think oh, so. No! Nothing that I can think of. Uh, Lebowski. I think we're ready to get going. <laughs> Lebowski. <laughs> oh, look at that sweater. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Like, well, that's just like your opinion, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, I think we're going to. We're going to head on out here, guys. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Once again, subscribe to our channel if you can. If we get to 100 subscribers, the hair is coming off. My daughter's going to shave it, so it'll be a lot of fun. Um, Yeah, Stay off the electric floors if you can, and from our families to yours. Have a good one. And may the Force be with you.